If you want to learn networking with Microtech equipment, but don't have an entire lab dedicated to this, then all you need to do is set up a virtual one. And since you're at it, grab yourself a nice cup of coffee. There are several ways to set up a virtual lab, but the most user-friendly tools are GNS3 and EVENG. Both of them are good choices and we do have a video on GNS3. But today we're going to switch things up and install EVENG on a Windows host. EVE is probably a bit more friendly to beginners coming from a Windows background and you're supposed to run it using VMware, which again is common in the Windows ecosystem. But a fun fact is that EVE is based on Linux and it is possible to install it on bare metal if you have a separate machine that can be used as a server. The virtual machine install will obviously require more hardware resources than bare metal, but it will also require slightly more resources than GNS3 because even G cannot run virtual machines directly on the host. Instead, it runs them inside the EVE VM, so it is doing nested virtualization. I already have a VMware workstation player installed, so what I need to do next is open EVENG.NET, go to Downloads and find the free EVE Community Edition and choose the OVF option, which is a VM image for VMware. And we will also need the Windows client-side pack, which contains some useful little programs. Once the downloads are complete, import the EVE VM into the VMware player. Since I'm on a quite powerful machine, I will assign it more than the default 8GB of RAM and I will also change the network adapter to NAT so that EVE and any other nested virtual machines are not directly sharing the IP address range of my office. Then before I launch EVE, I want to install the Windows client side pack which will allow me to easily open terminals to VMs from the EVE web interface. Next, I can launch the VM for the first time. When it has booted, it will ask for a login and the default credentials are username root and password eve. After that, it is just some configuration steps that I am going to keep very basic. Same password, all the default values and just leave the NTP server blank. Then we can log back in after a reboot and check if the internet connection is working, which it is, so we might as well update. But honestly, this is probably more likely to break something. I just like to update things because it makes me feel like a hacker. The EVM has been assigned an IP address running on your host. Of course, you can find it from within the virtual machine, but it is neatly displayed on the login screen after boot up. If you take that IP and type it into the browser, you should be presented with a login page. Now, this is a bit buggy for some reason. If the login page is not loading properly, then you try either typing HTTP in front of the IP or clicking refresh and stop until you get to see the login page. Once you get it, the login credentials should be admin with password eve. Create your first lab and click add object, then choose node. This will give you a drop down list of all devices that could be emulated by this tool. But they are all grayed out and you have to add support for all of them individually, apart from one. If you scroll to the bottom, there is this ultra simplified end device called virtual PC. To test whether it is possible to add an internet connection to these virtual machines, click Add Object, choose Network and pick the Management Brackets Cloud 0 from the Type dropdown. If you connect to it, this will put the emulated devices in the same network as the EVE VM itself. And if they run at the HCP server, they should get an IP address from the host. Actually, the first time I ran this, it didn't work. There were no DHCP packets received by any of my VMs and I believe there is some EVNG or VMware bug that caused it, but I didn't really get to the bottom of this. At one point I just randomly rebooted the host and it all started working. So if something doesn't work, just reboot it. With DHCP working, you are ready to add CHR. On the EVNG website, go to the documentation, click on how to, and then scroll down until you find Microtech Cloud Router. 
which is not the correct name. It should be cloud hosted router or CHR to be short, but whatever, click it and it will give you some simple steps to follow if you want to add CHR to EVE. First, it tells you to download some outdated version. Ignore that, just go to microtech.com download and find the cloud hosted router and pick raw disk image for the latest stable version 7 and extract it once it has downloaded. I have already done that, so I have CHR version 7.7 .7 image file ready. Next, the instructions tell you to SSH to your VM to create a new folder and then copy the image file to that folder and then rename it. Whatever, I'm just going to log in directly to the VM, CD to opt unit lab add-ons quemu. As you can see, there is nothing in there right now, so we're going to create a new folder and the correct naming here is Microtech with small letters, which can then be followed up with the version numbers for your own reference. And then I will do the next two steps with one CLI command. Just pop up the command prompt and type SCP with R flag, followed by the file location download slash CHR 7.7 .7 image, which you follow up with root at the IP address of your EVE VM and continue with a column slash opt slash unit lab slash add-ons slash quemu slash microtech dash 7.7 in my case, then slash hda dot qcow2, which is how the image has to be renamed, agree to connect and enter the root password when prompted. Then you can go back to EVM and check if you have indeed copied and renamed everything correctly. I have, so I can do the final step in this list and fix the permissions by typing slash opt slash unit lab slash wrappers slash UNL underline wrapper and a flag A fix permissions. Once that has been executed, we can go back to the web interface. If we add a new node, Microtech router OS is now available and you can set the CPU count, RAM, and the number of ethernets available to your liking. Next, connect it to the NetCloud and start it. You should then be able to connect to it and find that it has an IP assigned through DHCP and it should be able to reach the internet. If you add another router in the same manner, it should also get an IP assigned and you should then be able to ping the first router and see it in the neighbors. The MAC address that you see there is a little suspicious, not much entropy there. But if you compare it to the second router's interfaces, you can see that there is a one symbol difference. So they are unique enough for a single lab, but in my experience, if you add multiple labs, then the MAC addresses can overlap, which means that an IP address assigned to a router could get reused in another lab. So that is something to keep in mind if you're doing some sort of integration between your virtual labs and physical devices. In GNS3, the MAC addresses were pretty well randomized, so I'm not sure what is causing this lack of entropy in EVE and G, or perhaps it is something happening on the VMware level, but it is a pretty minor issue. Overall, this is a great tool for learning networking and the only thing I didn't like about it is that officially it only supports VMware, which is weird because you run EVE Linux image with VMware, which then uses Quemu to run CHR. Why not just use Quemu in the first place? Well, we're going to find that out in the next video where I will be back on a Linux host.